Good evening. This is All India Radio. I am Valsa Williams and with me is Aditi Lumba with the evening news. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says it is an important time to think how to take the nation ahead when it celebrates 100 years of independence. Campaigning ends for first phase of assembly elections in Uttar Pradesh polling on 58 seats to be held on Thursday 10 February. Campaigning going on in full swing for second phase in UP and single phase polling in Goa and Uttarakhand. BJP releases party manifesto in Goa. Prime Minister addresses virtual rally in Nainital and Uddham Singh Nagar in Uttarakhand. Congress leaders hold press conference in Dehradun. A special court in Gujarat convicts 49 accused in the 2008 Ahmedabad serial blast case. Quantum of punishment to be announced tomorrow. Kerala High Court upholds INB Ministry decision to revoke uplink and downlink permission to Media One News Channel. More than 5 crore youngsters in the 15 to 18 age group receive first dose of COVID vaccine. And in cricket, second ODI between India and West Indies to be played tomorrow in Ahmedabad. With the new Omicron variant of coronavirus causing concern, we appeal to our listeners to be vigilant and to get fully vaccinated and help others, including children between 15 and 18 years, to get vaccinated. Please continue to follow these three simple steps to stay safe. Wear a face mask, maintain two gaz ki duri for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. For any COVID-related information and guidance, contact National Helpline numbers 011-2397-8046 and 1075. And other news in detail. The Prime Minister Narendra Modi today replied to the motion of thanks on the President's address to Parliament in the Rajya Sabha. He said this is a very important time to think about where to take the nation and how to take it ahead when it celebrates 100 years of independence. Mr. Modi said in order to complete the resolution for this, we will need collective partnership and collective ownership. Today, in the Kalkhand, we have been able to give the country to the country. And the country, when the country will be made of the country, where do we want to take the country? We can take the country in the country. For this, this is a very important time. And I believe that the country will be able to take the country in the country. In the country, we will be able to take the country in the country. सबकी सामूहिक भागीदारी होगी और उसके कारण जो 75 साल की गति थी उससे अनेक गुना गति के साथ हम देश को बहुत कुछ दे सकते हैं Speaking on democracy, the Prime Minister said that we will never learn lessons in democracy from those who trampled over democracy in 1975. The biggest threat to the country's democracy is dynastic parties. When one family gets too prevalent in a political party, political talent suffers. The Prime Minister said if there was no Congress, there would be no emergency, no caste politics, Sikhs would never have been massacred, and the problems of Kashmiri pundits would not have happened. Highlighting the government initiatives during the COVID-19 pandemic, he said the country is marching towards administering 100% doses of COVID vaccines to beneficiaries. वैक्सीनेशन के संबंध में अभी प्रश्नकाल में हमारे आदरणीय मंत्री जी ने विस्तार से बात तो बताई है कि जिस प्रकार से भारत वैक्सीनेशन बनाने में इनोवेशन में रिसर्च में और उसके इम्प्लीमेंटेशन में आज भी दुनिया में वैक्सीन के खिलाफ बहुत बड़े आंदोलन चल रहे हैं लेकिन वैक्सीन से मेरा लाभ हो या न लाभ हो लेकिन कम से कम वैक्सीन लगाऊंगा तो मेरे कारण किसी और का नुकसान नहीं होगा इस एक भावना ने एक करोड़ देशवासियों को वैक्सीन लेने के लिए प्रेरित किया ये भारत का मूलभूत चिंतन का प्रतिबिंब है जो विश्व के लोगों के सामने रखना हर हिंदुस्तानी का कर्तव्य है Mr Modi said over 80 crore poor people have been provided free food grains during the COVID-19 pandemic. He said farmers have produced bumper crops and record procurements were made on minimum support prices. इस कोरोना काल में 80 करोड़ से भी अधिक देशवासियों को मुफ्त राशन की व्यवस्था चूल्हा कभी न जले ऐसी स्थिति पैदा न हो ये काम भारत में करके दुनिया के सामने उदाहरण हो सकता है इसी कोरोना काल में लाखों परिवारों को गरीबों को पक्का घर देने के अपने वादे की दिशा में हम लगातार चलते रहे और आज गरीब का भी घर खर्चा लाखों में होता है 
जितने करोड़ों परिवारों को एक घर मिला है ना हर गरीब परिवार आज लखपति कहा जा सकता है Talking about employment in the country, the Prime Minister said the government has focused on agriculture and the MSME sector that provides employment opportunities. Talking about inflation, the Prime Minister said during the period of 2015 to 2020, the inflation rate was ranging between 4 to 5 percent in the country, unlike in UPA's rule when it touched double digits. After the Prime Minister's reply, the House adopted the motion of thanks to the President's address, negating all the amendments moved by opposition members. Earlier during the Prime Minister's reply, the opposition parties, including Congress, TMC, RJD and others, staged a walkout, objecting to Mr. Modi's comments. The Congress has questioned Prime Minister Narendra Modi for criticizing it on different issues while replying to a discussion on the motion of thanks to the President's address. Talking to reporters outside Parliament, Leader of Opposition Malikarjun Kharge said members of different political parties spoke on all schemes and government's actions during the discussion. He said instead of replying to those, Mr. Modi just targeted the Congress during his speech. Earlier, Congress members, along with some other opposition parties, staged a walkout from the Rajya Sabha during Mr. Modi's reply. Parliamentary Affairs Minister Prahlad Joshi has appealed to the students to follow the dress code in their schools to avert any controversy. Talking to media outside the parliament today on the hijab controversy in Karnataka state, he said the issue is being raised by some people for political mileage. Mr. Joshi said school teachers and principals were requested to ensure students follow the dress code. So when there is a dress code, that dress code has to be followed. Usko follow karna, sabka, karte aur aur उधर कानून भी है और वो उसमें अंडरटेकिंग में देते हैं कि जब भी हम कॉलेज में आएंगे स्कूल में आएंगे हम ये ड्रेस कोड पालन करेंगे अभी तो ड्रेस कोड पालन करना है हम जो कानून है लॉ ऑफ द लैंड जो है तो मैं पालन नहीं करूंगा ये बोलना ठीक नहीं है इसके अलावा मैं इतना ये भी कहना चाहता हूँ कि अभी विषय जो है कर्नाटक हाईकोर्ट पहुंच गया है का हम इंतजार कर सकते हैं हम सब लोग Karnataka Chief Minister Basavaraj Bombay has appealed to all the students, teachers and management of schools and colleges and people of Karnataka to maintain peace and harmony. He has stated that orders are issued to close all high schools and colleges for the next three days. The appeal came in the background of stone pelting incidents and the tension that prevailed at educational institutions in Udupi, Shivamoga, Bagalkot and other parts on the issue of wearing hijab. Campaigning for the first phase of elections in Uttar Pradesh ended this evening. Polling on 58 seats for this phase will be held on the 10th of February. The state is going for polls in seven phases from the 10th of February to the 7th of March. A report. Cacophony of campaign fell silent this evening on the 58 seats of 11 districts of state where polling is in first phase of elections. Out of these 58, nine seats are reserved for scheduled castes. These 11 districts are Meerut, Ghaziabad, Gautam Budhanagar, Hapur, Bagpat, Muzaffarnagar, Agra, Mathura, Shamli, Aligarh and Bulanshahar. A total of 623 candidates are in fray for this phase of elections which will decide the political destiny of nine ministers of state government also. Out of the 58 seats which will go for poll on 10th February, BJP bagged 53 last time while Samajwadi Party and Bahujan Samaj Party got two seats each and one seat went to Rashtri Lokdal. Sushil Chandra Tiwari, AIR News, Lucknow. Meanwhile, campaigning is also going on in full swing for the second phase of polling in the state and single-phase polls in Goa and Uttarakhand. Star campaigners and prominent leaders of various political parties engaged in public rallies after finalization of the candidates for the first two phases. Door-to-door -door canvassing and virtual appeals to voters also continue. Prime Minister Narendra Modi addressed a virtual rally for voters in Nainital and Udham Singh Nagar of Uttarakhand today. Addressing the voters, the Prime Minister said this election would play an important role in making this decade the decade of Uttarakhand. He said these elections would also strengthen the foundation of the state for the next 25 years. Mr. Modi said he has a special relationship with the state and that although he lives in Delhi, Uttarakhand remains in his heart and he understands the sentiments and needs of the people of the state. 
Congress's national spokespersons, Professor Gaurav Vallabh and Dr. Ragini Nayak, addressed the media in Dehradun today. They accused the BJP government of not having done enough for the state in employment, education and crime against women. They said Congress parties... Char Dham, Char Kaam, Slogan and Manifesto, Uttarakhandi, Swabhiman have been popular with the voters. The BJP today released its party manifesto for the upcoming Goa Assembly elections. The manifesto is termed as Sankalp Patra, releasing the manifesto in Panaji. Senior BJP leader and Union Minister Nitin Gadkari promised to transform the state into a destination for co-working spaces and remote working in the post-pandemic world. Mr. Gadkari said Goa will be made a $50 billion economy. He said the BJP has completed 80% of the previous manifestos and they have released the report card. He said Congress leader Digambar Kamath should show how many promises he completed during his tenure as Chief Minister. Goa CM Pramod Savan said that three free gas cylinders will be provided in a year to empower domestic consumers in the state. He said there will be no increase in state government imposed VAT on petrol and diesel for the next five years. He assured that legal mining will be started if the BJP is voted to power. Senior BJP leader and Prime Minister Narendra Modi today virtually addressed voters and party workers of Rampur, Sambal, Badao districts in Uttar Pradesh. In his virtual interaction in Jan Chopal program, the Prime Minister said that UP BJP has issued resolution documents for the next five years and this resolution document will empower the poor, farmers and youth. He said that the Sankalp Patra will strengthen development work. He said that the BJP government has done everything what was promised in manifesto last time. Mr. Modi also addressed virtual rally for assembly segments of Ludhiana and Fatehgarh Sahib constituencies in Punjab. He said National Democratic Alliance has a vision of new Punjab to develop its agriculture and industry. Mr. Modi is sure to work for overall development of Punjab and make it a drug-free state. He said that he's lucky has got a chance to serve Sikh traditions and Punjabiyat. Bhajan Samaj Party President Mayavati today addressed an election rally at Nawaz Sheher in Punjab and sought votes for SADBSP Alliance. Addressing a rally, she alleged that Congress, Ahmadmi Party and all other parties are anti-scheduled caste. She said that by projecting Charanjit Singh Channi as CM face, Congress is only trying to grab power in Punjab. She said that Congress has been rejected throughout the country due to its anti-people and anti-SC community policies. In Manipur, the filing of nomination papers for the first phase assembly polls concluded today. Scrutiny will be held tomorrow and the last date for withdrawal of candidature is the 11th of February. More from our correspondent. Today is the last date of filing nomination papers for the first phase election in Manipur. More than 175 candidates has filed their nomination. Only two candidates filed nomination paper from Haingang Assembly constituency, including Chief Minister N. Biren, who filed his nomination paper on BJP ticket. 56 candidates filed nomination paper in Imphal West District. Meanwhile, the election campaigning has gained momentum in Manipur. A team of Election Commission of India, led by the Chief Election Commissioner, arrived yesterday for two days visit to Manipur. The Chief Election Commissioner Susil Chandra Edtude said that the Election Commission of India committed to conduct free, fair, peaceful, accessible, inclusive and inducement free election in Manipur. JJ Thokchom, AIR News, Imphal. You are listening to the Evening News on All India Radio. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. अपने बिजनेस को बढ़ाने के लिए लीजिए आकाशवाणी का सहयोग और दीजिए उसे बुलंदियों के पंख आपका बिजनेस लोकल है या राष्ट्रीय आकाशवाणी देती है उपभोक्ताओं तक पहुंचने का हर विकल्प और अब तो आप घर दफ्तर या दुकान पर बैठे-बैठे कर सकते हैं आकाशवाणी के किसी भी केंद्र के लिए विज्ञापनों की बुकिंग आकाशवाणी के विभिन्न चैनलों पर विज्ञापन देना सुलभ और सस्ता बुकिंग है तो संपर्क करें 8700001422 पर 8700001 Best wishes to all the consumers for Azadika Amrit Mohotsav. Hallmark ensures purity of gold. Always purchase Hallmark Gold Jewelry. For any consumer-related complaints, please contact National Consumer Helpline's toll-free number 14404. Issued in public interest by Department of Consumer Affairs, Government of India, Jago Grahat, Jago. 
In Gujarat, a special court in Ahmedabad today held 49 accused guilty in 2008 Ahmedabad serial blast case which had claimed 56 lives. Delivering the judgment in the 13-year-old case, the special judge A.R. Patel also acquitted 28 other accused. About 77 accused faced trials in this case. The quantum of punishment will be announced tomorrow. On 26 July 2008, 19 bombs rocked Ahmedabad city, killing 56 people. More than 200 people were injured. More from our Ahmedabad correspondent. 49 accused have been convicted in the 2008 Ahmedabad serial bomb blast case in Gujarat. This is the result of the investigation by Gujarat police, which had not only solved the entire conspiracy, but also broke the nexus of anti-national organizations in the country. There were a series of bomb explosions in Ahmedabad on 26 July in 2008, which resulted in death of 56 persons and injuries to more than 200 persons. Total 23 blasts took place in Ahmedabad on that day during the span of nearly one hour. Serial blasts were followed by a threat mail to the television channels from the Indian Mujahideen. Police also recovered 29 live bombs from various parts of Surat City. Yogesh Pandya, AIR News, Ahmedabad. The Kerala High Court today upheld the revocation of uplink and downlink permission to Media One News and Current Affairs Channel by Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. The restriction was placed on the channel after Ministry of Home Affairs denied security clearance to the channel. Justice N. Nagaresh dismissed the petition filed by the company running the channel after going through the files furnished by the Ministry of Home Affairs, which recommended against the renewal of the license. Dismissing the writ petition against Information and Broadcasting Ministry order, the court noted that the denial of clearance by Ministry of Home Affairs was based on the intelligence inputs which justify denial of security clearance to the channel. Health Minister Dr. Mansukh Mandavia has said more than 5 crore youngsters in the age group of 15 to 18 years have so far received the first dose of COVID vaccine. In a tweet, Dr. Mandavia appreciated the youth power and said that young India is fighting the pandemic with full vigour. In Arunachal Pradesh, bodies of seven army personnel who were struck by avalanche in high altitude area of Kameng sector on Sunday have been found. The Indian Army today said that search and rescue operations have been concluded. It added, unfortunately, despite the best efforts of everyone involved, all seven have been confirmed dead. The area, located at an altitude of 14,500 feet, had been witnessing inclement weather with heavy snowfall over the last few days. Efforts are on to rescue a youth who fell down a steep hill and precariously perched in a cavity of the rock in Kerala's Palakkad district. The youth, along with three friends, went trekking at Gerard Hills in Malampura forests yesterday when he accidentally slipped and fell down the steep hill. A Coast Guard helicopter from Kochi was sent to the area in an attempt to airlift the youth but could do little due to heavy winds in the region. The Palakkad district authorities have also sought the help of NDRF and mountaineers in the rescue effort. In cricket, the second ODI of the three-match series between India and West Indies will be played tomorrow at the Narendra Modi Stadium in Ahmedabad. Wise skipper K.L. Rahul and Mayank Agarwal have joined the Indian camp after missing the first ODI. Speedster Navdeep Saini is also back with the team after testing COVID negative. In the first ODI, India defeated West Indies by six wickets to take 1-0 lead in the series. In FIH Pro League 2022, Indian men's hockey team will kickstart the campaign against France in the season opener in Porterstrom, South Africa today. The match will start at 9.30 p.m. Indian time. Here is a review of proceedings in Parliament today. First from the Lok Sabha, writer is Kumar Rakesh of PTI. The Lok Sabha has resumed discussion on the union budget. Parthruhari Mehtab of BJD said allocation to crucial sectors like health and education are not adequate. It seems no lesson has been learned from the COVID-19 pandemic, he said, adding that revenue collected through education and health says have been used to cut down budgetary allocations to these important sectors. Jayant Sinha of BJP lauded the budget and noted that its provisions should be understood in the context of this being the ninth straight budget of the Modi government and the fourth by Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman. R.S. Verma of Bahujan Samaj Party said the budget offers no hope while unemployment, price rise and economic conditions have worsened. The budget ignores farmers, middle class and poor, he alleged. 
DR Reddy of TR has also criticized the budget, saying it is short on ideas and has nothing for the common man. The government's claim of making India a $5 trillion economy will be an illusion, he claimed. Replying to a question in the lower house, Union Minister for Agriculture and Farmers' Welfare, Narendra Singh Tomar, said keeping a separate budget for agriculture would neither benefit the country nor the farmers. The minister was replying to a question asked by DMK member T.R. Balu why the union government does not consider bringing a separate budget for agriculture to address the problems of the farmers. During global recession, the DMK member said India withstood because of the agriculture. Replying to the DMK leader's question, the agriculture minister said, noted, noted that there used to be a separate budget for railways earlier. However, the government brought reforms and merged the railway budget with the main budget, he said. If this is analyzed, people will see a vast difference in railway budget implementation, the minister told the House during question hour. The minister said the Prime Minister... Narendra Modi's government is fully committed to the farmers' interest in farming. While criticizing some aspects of the budget, Bhartru Hari Mehtab of Biju Janata Dal applauded Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman for presenting a budget that laid out a roadmap for supporting growth. She needs to be complimented as she presented the budget amidst a challenging economic environment. He said the budget has a clear intent and managed to provide allocations in many areas that would contribute to making India a modern, developed and inclusive nation. Referring to the aspects of the budget, Mahatab said the credit guarantee scheme being revamped for MSME to provide 2 lakh crore rupees of new lending, additional credit to hospitality, tourism and related pandemic affected sectors being provided, though the highly successful emergency credit line guarantee scheme would be significant for their revival. He, however, said the sectoral allocations have been slashed in critical sectors like agriculture and farmers' welfare, higher education, rural development and women and child's development. This could hamper growth, he said. Reduction in Mandrega is not going to help the poor. He also said there is no provision made for the urban poor. He said the budget would have been better if it had been more focused on issues affecting the common man, like inflation and unemployment. Discussion on the union budget is continuing in the House. And now review proceedings in Rajya Sabha. Writer is Rajesh Ahuja of UNI. Proceedings in the Rajya Sabha began today with Chairman M. Venkaya Naidu felicitating the Indian cricket team for winning the Under-19 Cricket World Cup. He said it is an outstanding achievement by the Indian cricket team in the Under-19 Cricket World Cup and is a matter of pride for the country. During the zero hour, Sushil Kumar Modi of the BJP, referring to the virtual digital assets like cryptocurrency, being taxed, suggested the government that 28% of GST be levied on lottery, betting and gambling. Vijay Sai Reddy of YSR Congress raised the issue of delay in filing vacancies in railways and other government institutions. He urged the government to fill vacancies in government institutions at the earliest. V. Sivadasan of CPIM pointed out that around 30 lakh posts are vacant in the government. Fazia Khan of NCP raised the issue of encroachment on Vakf properties. She urged the government to set up a committee to look into the matter. Tiruchi Siva of DMK expressed concern over the issue of rising level of migration from India to other countries due to a lack of jobs. He said over 8 lakh Indians gave up their citizenship as they saw greater financial opportunities in other countries. Priyanka Chaturvedi of Shivasena raised issue of many companies putting out social media posts on Kashmir Solidarity Day of Pakistan. She urged the government to seek apology from the companies, stating that these social media posts are challenging the sovereignty of the country. Responding to this, Union Minister Piyush Goyal said, the government has taken a cognizance of the matter and the companies had been asked to apologize. He said that the company has now issued an apology in the matter. Abdulam Wahab of RUML raised the issue of several Indians stranded in the UAE during the COVID pandemic. Mahesh Poddar of BJP raised the issue of plight of minority Christian community in Pakistan. Referring to the incidents of vandalism directed at the Christian community in Pakistan, he urged government to take steps to protect interests of minorities there. The House witnessed noisy scenes when L. Hanuman Thaya of the Congress raised the issue of the hijab row in Karnataka school. The chairman urged the members to desist from making allegations against each other. He named Nasir Hussain of Congress, who continued to protest defying the chair. During the question hour, 
Minister for Chemicals and Fertilizers, Mansuk Mandavia, responded to a question said that the government is giving Rs. 2,500 subsidy to farmers on per bag of urea. In reply to another question on deaths during the COVID pandemic, the minister said that there have been 5,33,000 deaths so far as per the data fed on the portal. On a question on deaths of children and women during the pandemic, Minister of State for Health Bharati Pradhan said states have been instructed to reduce infant mortality rate and maternal mortality ratio through the use of various schemes. Health Minister said that in India, 97.5% eligible people have been vaccinated with first dose and 77% with the second doses. Only vaccination has helped in fighting the Omicron wave, the minister said. The question hour was followed by Prime Minister Narendra Modi responding to the discussion on motion of thanks to the President's address. In protest against the speech of the Prime Minister, Congress walked out of the House. Charging the Congress governments at the centre of flouting democratic norms, he said that during the period of Congress, Prime Minister nearly 50 opposition governments were destabilised. India will progress when regional aspirations are addressed. When states prosper, then the country progresses, he said. On charges that the BJP government is trying to change history, he said, Congress thinking has been trapped by urban nuptials. We want to improve the memory of some people. We are not changing history. Some people's history starts from a particular time. We are only going back. Some people's history is limited to one family. Later, the House adopted the motion of thanks after rejecting the opposition am amendments by voice vote. The Upper House took up discussion on the general budget 2022-23. Initiating the discussion, P. Chidambaram of the Congress charged the BJP-led NDA government at the centre with mismanagement during the COVID pandemic. Mr. Chidambaram said there is no data available on oxygen shortage deaths on the bodies flowing in rivers on how many migrants walk to their homes. Participating in the discussion, Arun Singh of the BJP said the BJP government has taken several steps to improve the condition of poor. When lockdown was implemented, the first announcement was made to provide food grains to the people. Mandrega budget was also increased by the government when compared to the budget under the Congress regime. S.G. Devigora of the JDS said the government was showing step motherly treatment to Karnataka. Jawahar Sarkar of the TMC charged the NDA government with selling off of national assets of the country. That's all in the Parliament Review. India's COVID vaccination coverage has crossed 170 crore 81 lakh mark. The Union Health Ministry said over 95 crore 19 lakh vaccine doses have been administered as first dose and more than 74 crore 4 lakh vaccine doses given as second dose. It said more than 48 lakh 63,000 vaccine doses were administered today. The Ministry said more than 1 crore 56 lakh precautionary doses have been administered to the eligible beneficiaries so far. Over 5 crore children have received the first dose and more than 91 lakh second dose of COVID-19 vaccine till date. Ayush Minister Sarvananda Sonawal today launched a dedicated storefront for Ayurved products in, on Amazon in the marketplace. This Ayurved product storefront will enhance visibility of unique Ayurved products such as various kinds of juices, skin care supplements, immunity boosters, oils and more from small businesses and startup brands. Now let us take a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow. National Capital Delhi is likely to have rain or thunder showers with strong gusty winds. Mumbai will have fog or mist in the morning and partly cloudy sky later. Chennai is likely to have fog or mist in the morning and mainly clear sky later. Kolkata will have fog or mist in the morning and mainly clear sky later. Imphal, Shillong, Aizol and Kohima will have generally cloudy sky with light rain. Now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says it is important time to think how to take the nation ahead when it celebrates 100 years of independence. Campaigning ends for first phase of assembly elections in Uttar Pradesh, polling on 58 seats to be held on Thursday, 10 February. Campaigning going on in full swing for second phase in UP and single phase polling in Goa and Uttarakhand, BJP releases party manifesto in Goa. Prime Minister addresses virtual rally in Nainital and Udham Singh Nagar of Uttarakhand. Congress leaders hold press conference in Dehradun. A special court in Gujarat convicts 49 accused in the 2008 Ahmedabad serial blast case. Quantum of punishment to be announced tomorrow. Kerala High Court upholds INB Ministry decision to revoke uplink and downlink permission to Media One News Channel. 
More than 5 crore youngsters in the 15 to 18 age group receive first dose of COVID vaccine. And in cricket, second ODI between India and West Indies to be played tomorrow in Ahmedabad. For details of these stories and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.gov.in and News on AIR app. And with that, we end the evening news. Good night. <laughs>